Welcome to Father and Son. Welcome to you, Tom. Morning, Dad. Now, the most important news of the week is it looks like my mate John Singleton is going to buy 3AW. And that means we'll have a new boss. And he's a mate of mine, so we should be able to double our pay. Yes, uh, Fairfax uh, Media has decided to sell all of its radio stations. Uh, they include 3AW in Magic in Melbourne, 2UE in Sydney, 6PR in Perth, 4BC in Brisbane. Um, look, 3AW in those stations have been owned by different uh, people many times over the past 20 years or so. I don't think it will change anything operationally. Having said that, there's not many people who can actually buy it who would then have to sell some of the stations again because with the media ownership laws yeah. in Australia, you can't own more than two stations in one market. And in Melbourne, if we were single to buy it, you'd have 3AW, Magic, and the struggling MTR all owned by the same company. So, but he'd get rid of the others, wouldn't he? But he'd get rid of MTR. Not very much good. No. Now, the Queen's gone to Ireland. This is very interesting. A hundred years. It's the hundredth anniversary, I think, since the separation of Ireland came about. Her grandfather was the person who finally reached agreement. Well, it's, it's thousands of Irish died. It's a hundred years since the monarch visited. That was 1911. Oh, it? It's 90 or 89 years, depending on when you date the birth of the Irish Republic, which is 1921, 1922. Oh, that's right. It, it, it means a lot. Here we don't quite appreciate the significance of this. I mean, the Irish fought tooth and nail, you know, the 1916, uh, Easter, sorry, the July uprising, uh, you know, to, to get the, the British, and not just the English, because it was the Scots and the Welsh too, out of Ireland. Uh, and for the reigning monarch to visit means a big thing. And I saw some of her speech last night. It's fantastic. Yeah. I heard excerpts this morning. I thought she spoke exceptionally well. I thought she sounded a bit like when you see German leaders in the 70s and 80s, they'd say, you know, one would wish that history had been carried out a little bit differently and so forth. <laughs> I mean, look, in 1921, uh, 1920, you know, British forces went to a Gaelic football match with a couple of light tanks and opened fire on the crowd and killed 14 people. Did they? Uh, oh, yes. I mean, people, you know, over here in Australia and in the rest of Britain forget all that. In Ireland, they have not forgotten it. Uh, they haven't. Anyway, I think it's a great thing. She said, you know, we, we can look at the history, but we don't need to be bound by it in the future. So I thought it was a very pertinent comment. She's pretty good for her age, isn't she? I think she's outstanding, really. You know, she speaks so eloquently and beautifully. You know, and what's she 80 on? Uh, she's 85 now, and uh, Prince Charles is obviously stamping at her heels, wondering when he'll get his Well, he's turn. not going to get much of a go. He's not going to have a long... Uh, a bit like uh, Queen Victoria's son when he came to the throne. He was only there for about eight years. Yes, that's right. Oh, well, that's what happens when you're a hereditary monarch and you just have to wait your turn and it may be long or it may be short. The Queen's done very well, though. We yes. all agree with that. Now, uh, Ted Bailey today has made an announcement, which I fully support, that we don't, that all the speeches made in Parliament, speeches all around the place, you go to the Anglican Church and St Paul's Cathedral, and they say it was compulsory that we praise the Aboriginals, now, the race of Aboriginals. And uh, he's knocked it on the head. Now, it turns out it wasn't compulsory at all. No, well, uh, he's now saying that it, 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 all, all ministers have always had to do, or indeed any politicians, is simply uh, use words that they think are appropriate and respectful. Under the Labor government, they decided to make a sort of a formal, you know, we apologise and acknowledge the... Um, the, the was Brax, Brax brought that in. Yeah, now, I mean, I, look, I've always been against that as I am against any form of racial separatism in Australia. I don't care whether people are, you know, uh, Asian, Muslim, uh, European origin, Aboriginal. I think, you know, it's one law for all. And look, even with Aborigines, this is something that Aborigines don't want to acknowledge. There were at least three waves of Aboriginal migration that led to, you know, by the time of European settlement, what was known as the Aboriginal people. Now, should we distinguish between the first wave versus the second and third. They had the same thing in New Zealand. I mean, when the Maori arrived less than a thousand years ago, they wiped out an earlier race of people who were already there, and they tend to be forgotten about. So I just think it's better, to, again, as the Queen said to the Irish, let history be history, focus on the present, and the present is <coughs> not well served by uh, enforcing separation between people. I couldn't agree with you more. I think Ted Bailey has done a good job. Although it was interesting listening to the ABC this morning, they're all dead against it, as usual, those socialists on the ABC. Um, a friend of mine, the well-known comedian, John <coughs> Safran, once in a very funny TV show, he got some Aborigines and dressed them up in loincloths and paint. 
and he went round to people's houses in the northern suburbs of Northcote and so forth, and anybody who had an Aboriginal flag on the window, he would turn up and knock on the door and say, look, and the, they, the Aborigines would say, look, uh, we notice that you acknowledge our, our ownership of the land. We, we, we'd actually like to come back and, and retake possession of your house. And the looks on the faces of these people, and they said, well, you've got the flag on the window. You can stay here. Uh, we want to go out to your backyard and dig a pit and cook this dead kangaroo we've got here. But I, but I assume that's OK because you acknowledge this is our land and therefore we can do what we want. And I can tell you the... Uh, well, the, the sympathy towards the Aborigines went out the window. All the flags were taken day. down, were they? Well, not all of them, but quite a few. Now, Carlton played Geelong tomorrow night. It's a big game. Carlton, a 275 on the TAB. Wonderful bet. I think we're going to beat them. I will be too quick for them. And uh, our young Aboriginal boys, Garlet, Eddie Betts, Yaron, are all playing great footy. And I think we can beat them in, through the midfield as long as Juddy plays well. Well, it uh, will be a great game. Of course, Carlton fourth on the ladder. Uh, Geelong first, having <coughs> knocked off Collingwood by three points last week. Uh, and, and it is great to see so many teams being very, very competitive. Carlton, let's be honest, hasn't been all that competitive for a while. Geelong has been the great team of the past few years. It doesn't mean it's won every grand final, but it's always been the team to beat. I think it'll be a good game and could possibly be a record crowd for Eddie Hadd Stadium. Why would you put it on Eddie Hadd Stadium beyond me? It's I mean, madness. It's Carlton's home game, and had they had this game at the MCG, you'd get 80,000. Carlton's going to lose about 30,000 supporters who would like to go. It's announced this morning it's a sellout, so there's no seats left, and I just think it's a disgrace by the AFL for putting the game there. Yeah, the, the AFL could learn something from the NRL. The <coughs> NRL has far greater flexibility to reschedule the time of games and the location of games to maximise crowd numbers. Um, I think the AFL, this is obvious, there's no other game at the MCG on Friday night. This will clearly pull a big crowd, 80, possibly even 85,000, as you suggested, it should be there. And just speaking of Carlton, uh, would you believe Doug Hawkins, former Footscray or Western Bulldogs great, came out today and said that ex-Carlton, ex-Brisbane, current Casey Scorpions player, Brendan Favola, should be snapped up by the Bulldogs if they want to win a flag next year. Brave call. Well, you know, he, he's as mad as a march here. Like he, he was a great footballer, but uh, <coughs> anyway, I think that for a while, does get back and play well anyway. Oh, no, that's it for this week. We've got to get uh, off to lunch, and uh, we'll see you all next week.